Now, every published book I ever read made me think I couldn't be a writer. Anger. I didn't know I was writing at the time. I just set off writing. I just had a day. Do you know where, imagine if you spend 10 years in a really bad frame of mind, um, and obviously you build up some pressure and there came a day with just a single trigger set me off to write a page because there was nothing else I could do. The trigger on that day was uh, a television picture of an American teenager being put into the back of a police car. And I was having, at the time, I was uh, having a big internal argument about a loss of reason or about very bendy reason, which is worse than bendy buses. Sort of how reason in the modern day has come to be um, really twisted and, I don't know, I just saw this teenager being put into a police car and it was clear that um, he must have taken a gun to school. And I came to ask myself how responsible he really was. And I don't know, it was just something that kicked me off at the time um, and became a conduit for many things to, to flow through. The first page, I thought it was worth doing another page. Um, and to, to essentially kept that up. Uh, and obviously it was crap. I wrote, basically, I was writing in the voice of that kid I saw on TV who I knew nothing about. I didn't even hear the sound clip from that news report. I just saw the image of this. He was hoodie and uh, was just a dork, you know, adolescent. And clearly couldn't, wouldn't even be responsible for good things, let alone bad things. He was just an unformed human being. And um, I wrote in about five weeks, I wrote 300 pages in the voice of that kid, but without any sense of, still without any structure at all. And then I went back, then I thought, I'll go back and put structure in. That took much longer. Big times, uh, three, from scratch, three. The first time I wrote him, there wasn't a high school shooting in the story at all, actually. It was a very remote commentary. Um, and that started coming in. And it was really an organic thing happened, which was mysterious. What happened, this is what happens with writing, is that um, um, it becomes very mysterious things go into the work that even you, you don't know where they come from. It's not a calculating art. Well, it wasn't to me anyway. You don't sit and deliberately think how things are going to go, but you throw, it's like a life, and you throw new elements into it, and your characters react to them as they would. And as the character takes on substance, then they react with their own personalities, and so you can't control them. They they react as um, as they would, and you can't tell them anything. Or you can just throw new elements in. It's very weird. It's a, it's a, a curious thing to do. It's surprising when you do it. Anyone watching who is who is thinking to write, embark, get beyond fifty pages, uh, and you'll be amazed what happens. That almost doesn't seem to come from you. I knew a number of times how it would end, uh, but none of them are the ending which that book has today. I mean, this, I'm speaking of Vernon, and um, he died as he probably should have done the first time that I wrote him. Here's the problem. I'm an observer, I've always been an observer, and I was an artist before that, and so I'm, I'm interested in what happens. I'd rather sit back and observe something than be involved in something, because 
more valuable things happen and um, I, I can uh, collect things from that. But here's what happens is that if you, if you live a life and you, and you go out on the streets and you do things, uh, there constantly be ideas and phrases and bits and pieces that you want to collect. Uh, and if you're not sitting in front of a page, even if you scribble them down, they lose their context and lose their moment. And so you get into this horrible routine. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, uh, but it's much safer for me to sit in front of a page and wait uh, and put and just keep writing. I don't wait, but I write things. Um, and then your ideas come into a context. Whereas if I leave the page, I get very nervous that I'm going to miss something. The life, in other words, your life transfers onto that page in a way. Or mine does. There's never a day when nothing happens. What happens is, is shit happens. There are days and weeks and months. That's the hardest thing about, about writing, having to resign yourself to writing shit for months and months on end. Uh, and it does happen that you can be eight and nine and 10 months writing crap and knowing that you're writing crap and still having to get up next morning and look at that. Uh, but something happens I don't know, the two analogies to look at it. One is uh, like reducing a stock on a stove where curiously, I mean, you chuck all your ingredients in and you boil and boil and boil yourself until you are completely simmered the life out. Um, but in the last 10 minutes, the, finally the water evaporates and just in the, literally in the last moment, the thing gels and and become something, this kind of blind mining, um, or the idea that it's a climb, and it really is a climb up to levels. Where you put down a first draft and it's completely unsatisfactory, but there are nuggets in it, and you pull them out, and then you start another draft and some more nuggets, and you build a hill and climb to the top of that. Uh, and the higher you get, the, the better the book is, the more people understand it. Yeah, probably, or they go together. The characters are defined by, by where they are, so probably not. They will come before plot, but the character also is in, his, is in a, a life plot. If he's a coal miner or he's a decadent, then there will be a plot suggested around him. Yeah, you, you can get closer to them and um, that, that makes a, a good difference. You do see through their eyes. It's maddening because you take on all their troubles and stuff as well. Um, and so they, personally it can drive you crazy, but I don't know, you, you don't become them. So, well, I'll tell you this, Vernon says a lot of things that I would never say in life. So you are acting, you're in, the, you're in the center of a different character. And in the beginning, of course, they're just mouthpieces for what you want to say in the book. But um, in both cases where I've written first person, they end up saying things I would never say or agree with. Uh, but because it's them, you have to put it down. That's very curious. It's not so much that they dominate you, but there's something, there is a friction in doing that, which um, uh, which can drive you nutty, you know. In Vernon, I, was, I went fully, fully mad with that. I was literally was starting to see cockroaches and rats and things. Uh, it's probably more from my work habits than from the character, though. It's just.